If you're a long-time viewer, you'll know that CPUs, GPUs, and other high-performance desktop parts are my main focus. I absolutely love what has been happening in the industry. CPUs such as the Ryzen 9 5950X have really, really redefined how we can view high-performance desktop parts in the home. 16 cores, 32 threads absolutely demolishes 3D rendering, video editing, and games, but Ultimately, you can't necessarily take a high-performance desktop with you on the go to school or perhaps on a plane. And this is one of the reasons that mobile computing has been so popular of late. Fortunately, AMD have been doing a lot there as well, with Cezanne for mobile being very well received. Cezanne is essentially Zen-free, but for the mobile form factor with the tweaks and optimizations that you would expect. Now this is a sponsored video where we're going to be taking a look at the Acer Nitro 5. So thanks very much to both Acer and AMD for the opportunity to take a look at this device. I've been really interested in the mobile market for a while now as a number of people have been asking for some advice on it. So it's actually working out very well for this opportunity. And while this is a sponsored video, the opinions in this video are my own. So yeah. I think that's enough rambling. Let's take a look at the specs and talk about the stuff. The Acer Nitro 5 is powered by an AMD Zen 3 based Ryzen 5600H with Radeon graphics. This is a six core 12 thread CPU with single thread workloads in say Cinebench R23. We see the CPU maintain a frequency of about 4.2 gigahertz, but loading all threads and cores in the same benchmark, Cinebench R23, it maintains a clock frequency of 3.6 gigahertz or higher if you decide to play around with the fan speeds. Acer has configured the Nitro 5 with a discrete graphics card. Our model sports the RTX 3060 from NVIDIA. 3840 CUDA cores with 14 GPPS memory running on a 192-bit bus for a total of 6 gigabytes of RAM. Clearly, with the RTX 3060, you can enjoy features such as hardware-based ray tracing, DLSS, and other things too. The internals of the machine are pretty user-serviceable, allowing you to change out things such as storage easily or plonk in different memory. We changed the RAM which came with our model for 32GB as the PR company which uh, acted on behalf of Acer didn't have higher capacity models to hand. But of course you guys are free to configure the machine to suit your needs when you purchase it. I wanted to opt for 32GB because we'll be running through more punishing video editing and rendering tasks later with our Nitro 5. This laptop then is pretty powerful and capable as a machine. Acer's decision to go with the 5600H has paid off very well here, ripping through games and applications without too much effort, and also doing so without draining tons of power, although we'll look at uh, power benchmarks later on, and we'll look at performance in just a second. The 5600H too comes with Radeon graphics, and of course this means that less taxing applications, such as say web browsing or messenger clients, can fall back to this with major power savings. AMD Cezanne CPUs come in a wide variety of different configurations. Our laptop was equipped with a Ryzen 5600H, and it's a 6-core 12-thread affair, with a TDP of just 45 watts. We'll go through benchmarks and how the processor sticks to those higher clock boosts later on in the video. But if you do decide that you would require a more powerful CPU for very intensive CPU workloads, such as, say, heavy video editing or 3D work, and your budget can extend to it, there are eight core models as well, such as the 5980HX, which offers not only higher thread and core counts, but also higher clock frequencies. Acer does have a number of uh, different AMD laptops available, of course, so you can check out their selection. Speaking for a moment further of the Cezanne architecture, the basic premise of the CPU is that it takes the same Zen 3 architecture found in both desktops and servers, but changes things for both smaller dies and lower power consumption. The CPU's L3 cache is shaved to just 16 megabytes, half of that of the desktop, for example, and we also see a rather large increase in IPC compared to the Zen 2 generation, about 20%. The entire APU package is also a tad larger than previously. It's 180mm2 versus 156 
as Zen 3 cores are denser than Zen 2, but AMD have also added additional features too for Zen 3. There's also a Vega-based GPU on package, as Cezanne is an APU, and this contains eight compute units. It is a somewhat shame that AMD could not make the transition to RDNA for additional graphics power, but with that said, not only of course do you have the RTX 3060 for discrete graphics performance with the Nitro 5, but furthermore, AMD have taken a lot of effort to improve both power and energy efficiency versus the launch architecture we saw in desktop. The RTX 3060 will fire up when heavier loads, such as say games or heavy GPU compute workloads, kick in. It's a nice configuration and allows the 144Hz screen to stretch its legs, greatly benefiting from the power in games. Naturally, in titles with hardware-based ray tracing, well, it can be more punishing. Fortunately, you can use either NVIDIA's DLSS or AMD's FSR to help with upsampling and performance. Here you can see Doom Eternal with DLSS on and off, and well, yeah, it's a rather nice performance boon with DLSS on. What about the ports in the machine? At the rear is a barrel power plug, which connects to an external power brick. Not much to say there. On the right of the laptop, we have a single HDMI port, a single USB-C Gen 2, and on the left are two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1, an Ethernet, and an audio. It goes without saying that the device is quite lightweight, about 2.3 kilograms. There are certainly lighter laptops, but given the level of performance here, it's still pretty reasonable. The screen is 144 Hz, 1080p affair, which is responsive enough in gaming. The color accuracy isn't the best. There are certainly laptops with better color accuracy. However, it's more than good enough for gaming. And again, looking at control and other titles here, it does look pretty gorgeous. But if you do want to use a laptop for professional Photoshop, for example, either look for a different Acer model or perhaps go and uh, hook this up to a nice external monitor. Again, if extreme color accuracy is required. Okay, so what about the benchmarks then? Well, we've decided to test this laptop with several different workloads, both synthetic, games, and productivity. We'll be putting out some future videos too, which will be going deeper into both productivity and uh, gaming as kind of a setup for your home. In other words, actually plugging it into a high refresh rate, higher um, resolution screen. But for now, let's take a look at what we've got because this laptop is pretty damn impressive. Cinebench R23 scores over 9,200 points in multi-thread, which is even more impressive when you consider it actually outpaces older AMD CPUs such as their own 1700X. Sure, it was based on a Zen 1 architecture, but it's a desktop chip and also had two extra cores and threads. Sticking to the productivity theme, SpecView per 13 results here show impressive scores for both 3DS Max, Maya, Creo, and others. Of course, you can get faster results with a Ryzen 7 or an RTX 3080 mobile type of system, but again, this laptop is costing you around a thousand US dollars, and it's pretty impressive what you can actually get now for a laptop circa that price point. I mean, compare that to a laptop just a few years ago, and yeah, it's really good. Thanks to the impressive Zen 3 architecture, Geekbench scores 1,400 and 7,200 points respective of single or multi-thread, and just shy of 100,000 points in OpenCL running on the RTX 3060. Blender benchmark is similarly impressive, and moving on to games, well, Gears 5 hits 77 FPS, with all settings at the highest at 1080p, and 1440p is also extremely playable. Metro Exodus Remaster is highly impressive, with hybrid ray traced reflections making the game just look absolutely gorgeous. The new fangled CPU benchmark in 3 d Mark spits out very impressive results, scaling excellently across the Ryzen 5600H's 6 cores, 12 threads. More importantly, we also get a great readout of clock frequencies as the CPU is loaded with additional cores and threads, and we can see that the CPU generally does cling to 4GHz. 
To round things up, we've got some gameplay of Resident Evil 8, Control, and other titles. And yeah, overall, the laptop scores excellently. Finally, we have Port Royal and Time Spy to finish us off. Battery life for the device was reasonably good, though of course it does depend what applications you're running, with more CPU or GPU intensive applications draining the battery much faster than say watching Netflix or editing a Word document. Our testing revealed an average battery life of 67 hours for our Nitro 5 from a few days of average use, i.e. streaming from Netflix, browsing the internet and writing scripts. Although, again, battery life is very subjective depending on the number of applications as well that you're running in the background. Audio for the device was pretty decent and sufficient for casual gaming or Netflix sessions. Fortunately, even under heavy load, the fans of the system don't ramp up too much unless you do push for higher fan profiles manually. This makes the speakers usable without hearing the roar of GPU fans like on some laptop models. Overall then, the Acer Nitro 5 lineup, for our model anyway, has been very impressive. While 8GB of RAM isn't necessarily what I would recommend for those wanting to do, let's say, um, video editing, you can easily change out the memory. And of course, there are a ton of different models from uh, Acer and AMD available, so you can go ahead and check those out. I'll leave a link in the video description. As for the rest of what I've got to say, well, honestly, it's pretty uh, positive. Cezan, it really is a very impressive product. And it's going to be very interesting to me how the industry moves forward with the possibility of, well, AMD plus AMD, in other words, an AMD CPU and GPU over the next couple of years. We've already started to see some very impressive APUs from the company, of course, with SmartShift, but imagine how this could evolve even further in the future with discrete GPUs, and it's pretty exciting stuff. For this particular model though, the RTX 3060 does perform very admirably, and it's nice to be able to run both DLSS and FSR depending on the game. And this does mean that, yeah, it is a pretty nice system on the go, but you can also quite happily run this on like a 1440p monitor, and it does a pretty good job. Ultimately, well, just like any device, it really depends on your budget and your use case scenario. But I have to say that, at least in my opinion, this has been a really fun device to kind of mess around with. And I'm very excited to see what future products we're going to be seeing from AMD and just overall what happens to the market. It's going to be a very interesting next couple of years, I suspect. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Leave a like and uh, also comment down below. Are you more of a mobile gamer? Do you prefer consoles or... On the other hand, are you just like ardent desktop user? With that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.